Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me, I have somebody who is so near and dear to my heart. And I think that everybody who meets her and knows her says this. So I'm just uh, one of the masses that loves Miriam Barnett, who is the CEO, which stands for Chief Executive of Opportunity. I love this, of the YWCA of Pierce County. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Amanda. Good to have you on the comfy couch. Good to be here. Oh my gosh. So let's chat, because as I kind of let it leak just a little bit, <laughs> we have um, a new project. But before I ask you about that, let's give folks kind of a mini history of the YWCA in terms of Tacoma, its location, um, and uh, also the new shelter that opened in 2010. Yeah. So the YWCA Pierce County started in 1906 here in Tacoma. And since 1927, we've been in the same building at 4th and Broadway in it downtown is. Tacoma. I love that building. It's a beautiful building. It is. Been remodeled since, but, um, but it kept intact. needed it. It kept yeah, totally God, intact. It's gorgeous. Same feeling. Those walls are yep. beautiful. And then, uh, like you mentioned, in 2008, as we were going into a deep recession, we raised $5 million, bought the apartment building across the street and transformed it into our beautiful domestic violence 90-day emergency shelter. Gosh. Yeah. I mean, that, that's some serious fundraising as we were going into a recession yes. to raise that kind of money. Yes, it was. Um, I think the community was ready for us to take yeah. a step. Well, I, so they supported it. You know, the, the Y has such credibility because it it influences and touches and enforces that safe tapestry every day in Pierce County. It walks the talk, it stands in solution and removes barriers mm -hmm. very, very quickly for people who are in need of their services. And which leads me to the next part of this is that we have a serious need in our community for your new project. So tell us what it is. So in Tacoma, as in every community, I'm convinced, I in the United States, yep, I am too. affordable housing is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. It happens to be, I think, even bigger for us here in Tacoma, though, because we have the highest burn rents in the nation. <sighs> so Seattle has priced people out. They're moving down here. And so that's creating a problem for the people we serve yes. who need to find permanent housing when they leave our shelter. So we decided, once you, like you said, to be part of the solution. You guys are. And so we have been raising funds and have started construction, finally, after so many years of it being a dream, yes. on 55 units of deeply affordable housing for families coming out of homelessness. Oh my gosh, so this, so it, it, this is transition housing? Permanent. Permanent housing. They can stay as long as they want with views of the water, views of the mountain, million dollar property that we are um, creating housing with dignity for the people who need it the most. I am going to try to hold it together here. <laughs> so you mentioned you had raised, how much did you say? $23.2 million. We have a little bit still to go, but not much, about 650000 left. Which we're going to get you there. We're going to get there. We are. That's a lot of money to have raised. Um, and so we are thrilled that so, we were able to start. What lessons did you learn when you created a new shelter that you, you created, you mentioned, yeah. the one that you raised $5 million for, that you applied to this project? Right. So I love that question because it really touches on what our values are at the YWCA and what we learn from the shelter. And what we learn from the shelter is that when you give people space that has dignity, when you give them beautiful space, surround it with art, surround it with beauty and privacy, their own apartment, they heal differently. They oh, heal yeah. quicker, they heal more completely, their children bounce back. It's amazing to witness. Wow. And we didn't even really understand, I think, the power of beauty mm -hmm. until we opened the shelter. And it's been since 2010 that we opened that shelter, so we have nine years of witnessing the difference that beauty makes. So therefore, it became really important that all of our programs have that provide that dignity mm -hmm. and we have it in all of our programs the one piece we were lacking was housing and so we are making sure art is part of this project it's in the budget yes and it's going to be stunning no one will think when they drive by oh that's an affordable housing complex they'll want to live there and then and then when we talk about i want to i want to kind of just sidecar this um one of the one of the 
pictures I have in my mind, Miriam, is when that shelter was opened up, mm -hmm. I remember very clearly you had designers who took yes. each apartment right. and decorated it. And these apartments looked like something you would walk into a showroom if you were showing a million dollar apartment downtown and to say, this is our show unit when we're done. Right. Are they going to have that same kind of feel to them? So they're going to have the same beauty, the feel of beauty, and the incredible view. View. Right. Um, we are going to provide what clients need. So yes. sometimes it will be more empowering for them to decorate themselves. Absolutely. We're going to do family by family. Okay. So it's a little bit different focus. What's the timeline for finishing up the project and then opening yeah. the tent? So we started on November 11th. We broke ground, which yes. was about six months later than we had hoped. There are All things right. that happen. You learn. Yeah. I understand that's not un unusual. Uh, felt unusual to me. Um, so now our deadline, our hope for opening is January 2021. I was kind of hoping for 2020 because it's a year of perfect vision. Yes, it is. But I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm going right. to accept January 2021. The perfect vision gets you into 2021. There you go. I Thank you. love that. <laughs> so you have on your team, yes. boy, I'm going to tell you something. When I think about the YWCA, I always think of that phrase, many hands make for light work because you have an, an incredible team. So what? who do we need to talk about that's made this project come to fruition? So you're absolutely correct. The staff at the YWCA are amazing. They rock. About 55 yep. amazing people I get to work with every day. This team uh, um, that's been working specifically on this project has been myself and the deputy director, Karen White. And then we hired the best possible low-income housing consultants, Beacon Development. Mm. Couldn't do it without them. They are so wise. You know, this is a one and only for us, so we don't have to become experts. Right. We hire experts there we go. to do that piece. I, that's Smart. a bit of advice I would share. We have amazing architects, SMR, uh, that only design low-income housing. This is the first one they've done of hundreds with views, wow. which made me very proud. And then we have Cosmo Construction, our local construction company, which is something I'm very proud of as well because I believe supporting our local economy. And also Cosmo Construction has a huge heart for community. They do. And they give back everywhere you look. So we, yes. we've just put together this great, great team, and uh, I just couldn't feel more blessed. I love that. Um, speaking of teams, um, your team is, is the kind of team that love is in the details. Um, I know that because I have the pleasure and privilege of being your MC for Glam That yes. Gives every year. And when I watch that shelter, you guys thought of everything from silverware to shoehorns. It was in there everywhere. And I thought, that is so like the YWCA because they understand that love is in the details. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the details coming up of Glam That Gives yeah. because I want people to know how much this has grown and this is their chance to help you yes. with that remaining amount that we need for mm -hmm. this housing. Yeah, so Glam That Gives is our annual auction, dinner auction. This year it's going to be at the Eastside Community Center, which is super exciting. Them. Yes, it's going to be fabulous. It's a 70s theme, so it's going to be super fun. Uh, we do have a wonderful MC named Amanda Westbrook and her beautiful wife, Laura, being our auctioneer. Yes. So it's going to be entertaining as well. And we typically raise several hundred thousand dollars at yeah. this event, so it is our biggest fundraiser of the year. And we're super excited. February 1, Eastside Community Center. Yeah. Be there. Tickets on sale now on our website, ywcapiercecounty.org. People that are watching right now um, are going to want more information, and I know they're also going to want to donate. Can they use that website to get into your, your system and donate? Yes, ywcapiercecounty works or homeatlast.org works okay. as well, which All is right. our uh, campaign website. You know, um, the Supreme Court just uh, struck down the Ninth Court's uh, they actually upheld the ruling that people who are unhoused cannot be prosecuted for being unhoused. But what it, the bigger message was, as you just said, was that communities need to focus on affordable housing. That's what we need. So if you could give one piece of advice to anybody considering doing a project like this, and I hope that there are many organizations that have this on tap mm -hmm. for 2020, what would it be? It starts with a vision. Yeah. So have your vision. You can visualize people in these apartments. You can make anything happen if you put the right team together and just build on that synergy. 
and fill your gaps with people who know what you don't know so oh. that you can create that amazing team that can make it happen. So build that cabinet and make it so that it's complete and fills in where you lack knowledge. Yeah. That would be my best advice. Miriam, are you available for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> because I, if I were a CEO that was looking at building affordable housing, I'd want to take you out to lunch and I'd want to like get your contacts and repeat the success you've had. So if your phone starts ringing yeah. off the hook, you know it's because people saw this segment <laughs> yeah. want some help. I totally welcome that. I, love I that. truly do. I love that. Yes. Thank you so much Thank for you, all Amanda. that you do for this community Absolutely. and the beautiful angels behind you that we couldn't fit on the couch. Yes. <laughs> um, you are amazing, and I feel so honored and uh, so privileged, as I always say, to kiss the hem of your garment. <laughs> so I'll see you on February 1st. Yes, absolutely. Can't wait. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. When we come back after just a little bit of musical chairs, KNKX Public Radio will be here. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.